So this little old lady has been a really good customer of ours for a couple of years now. And another shop had actually done some previous work to this truck and they didn't do anything that she wanted done. So what we did was go through it and paint it the color that she actually wanted painted because they painted it the wrong color. And now we're going to put an LS in it instead of the three liter Ford Ranger V6 that the other shop put it in. What have we done? Well, we had to cut a lot of things. There was cutting of this, cutting down there, cutting right here. Essentially, we're getting rid of the old, badly welded like Harbor Freight booger welds on this uh, plate that someone put on when they put the V6 in. We had to trim this little piece down here that had some brackets sticking out that wasn't being used anyway because those were getting in the way. And then we made it so that we can uh, put it into service position now with the uh, T-bar getting cut out so that this could slide in and out without having to put the motor at like a 60 degree angle and try to you know do one of these numbers. Um, Brandon is now, what the? Here my guinea pig to see if it was still edible. I definitely want some football. Oh, God. It's been in my fridge overnight. Gross. You're gross. I know that. At least I'll admit it. <laughs> <laughs> so, what we just did... They were in the fridge all night. Quit messing up my shop, boy! <laughs> oh. I got a great idea you can do with that camera. <laughs> he was literally about... I knew it. <laughs> You could shove the camera up his ass <laughs> and share that with the world. All right, uh, leave a comment below if you want us to do that in the next uh, episode. So what we did was we used these little, uh, I don't even know what these are actually for on the, the OEM truck. And we measured across to just get a rough idea of where this uh, crank pulley is sitting and we use the edges of it as reference to kind of center this out. And then we measured from the frame rail here, uh, let me see if I can get in there, right here, to the center hole on the mount. And we got it to the point where it was sitting perfectly in between the two frame rails at five inches center to center on the holes. And then we centered up the crank pulley and then we used this handy dandy, uh, super accurate iPhone app to make sure that this is sitting where it should, right? So we want, it's the level. Dandy dandy. Yeah, it comes, it comes stock, it's OEM. And then we wanted about a two degree angle pitched backwards on the block. And now that all that is sitting perfectly where it needs to be and it's floating in its little happy place, Brandon is doing arts and crafts. <laughs> and then we'll take those chunks over oh, to the... Penis. I'm sure a lot of things have a phallic shape. We'll take these phallic shaped cardboard bits over to Dave and have him cut them out on the uh, plasma table. Now that it's resting in there, we're gonna take the exhaust manifolds that we have for it, set them in there, and just make sure that we have clearance for everything. If we don't have clearance, then I'm gonna have to move the motor mounts and see what we have to do to get clearance for everything else. After the exhaust manifolds are in and we have those with enough room, we're going to weld up the mounts that we have on there, because right now they're still just tacked and then we're going to do the transmission mount. 
So that's the last thing that I want to do because those two are really the most important and they're going to also dictate where we put the uh, transmission mount. First test fit, I found a few problems, um, but they're minor for right now. I don't think we have to move the engine, but I gotta move these things before I know for sure. First one on the driver's side is, oh, there it is, the e-brake cable. So this going all the way up here is touching the header, which can't have, and it's also keeping me from putting it on the head. So. I'm gonna take this off, see what I can do to move this stuff. We might have to uh, do some wonky things with the e-brake uh, cable. We'll have to see what we have to do, but I wanna get the header in first. This side, um, less of a problem. These are hitting this one, which uh, these are the fuel lines. So whatever, we can move those and I'd rather have them on the other side of the frame than next to the exhaust coming down on this side. So. I'm just going to probably come back here and trim them up. Um, that way, don't have to worry about them anymore until we run the fuel lines to the LS. Hey. Now we just gotta do that uh, three more times. Three more times. What's our update, dude? Well, didn't go 100% perfect the first try, so we're giving up and we're closing the shop. Uh, yep, yep, yep. So this manifold bolted up, but it's really close to the upper control arm, which is that part. This side, however, won't made up with the head, as you can see there's a gap there, and it's touching the upper control arm. Kind of hard to see, but it's down there under the steering column. So, also, we're going to have to try to move the motor mounts. We're going to play around with this a little bit, and hopefully we end up in a decent spot. Look what he made me do. Granted, it fits. It fucking works, dude. <laughs> but I don't care what you say. I don't think she's gonna go for turbos. I don't think she's gonna go for custom, expensive, handmade manifolds either. Well, then but I guess one we're of at them an is impasse. significantly more fun. We're at an impasse, that's what it is. I, it's definitely more fun, but this is already probably too much engine for her. Well, put it on a low boost tune. Small turbos with a low boost tune. Or put ones that are so big. So that a they don't even spool? That it, <laughs> <laughs> that it doesn't spool till like four grand. And then she can just stay out of boost almost all the time until she panically tries to get on the interstate. <laughs> and then we and have then, grandma f***ing fishtailing all the way down the interstate. The yeah. yeah, I don't... I mean, if we painted them, if we blasted the manifolds and painted them black or got them powder coated, you could probably do a nice piece, build a nice piece. A that turn right a there? 180 that just went straight down. I like the fact that we're gonna like, I like I like the fact that we're gonna use OEM manifolds because if she ever wants more, it's like, okay, pick them off any truck. Yeah. <laughs> um, if we make custom manifolds, that's that's just the whole that's it. shit show. And then we know damn well that we're not gonna order any like shorty header kit, small block That'll Chevy, work. Anything, it's none, none of them are gonna fit. Yeah, I agree. We're gonna fix the motor mounts first, and we'll reassess. Uh, we'll assess this. We'll re yeah, we'll reassess the header exhaust manifold situation. I actually forgot, but then I remembered that me and Fred talked about doing a brace in between the mounts. So I went and made them, put them in. Now we're gonna put the engine back in. Use the 
honestly, the front needs to go down. I think I can try to go down. Yep. Next on the agenda is figuring out the tranny mount and making it unbolt, at least removable in some way, shape, or form. Getting the car accessories so that this is where it needs to be sitting, and the intake manifold. Oh yeah, massaging the tunnel to make it easier to go into. Oh, we might trim these as well, the little tops of the mounts, because I think the fronts are higher than they need to be. I'm considering using, like, grinding this to be pretty again, and then welding on a tab with a couple nuts, maybe three, mm -hmm. on each side, and then doing a bar under this that just kind of comes to the bottom of that. That way the bar can... Under it or over it? I was thinking under. How far down is the training mount? Yeah. I think the training mount's like this tall. Okay, yeah. So it, it, like, essentially the other thing too is the bar being there. I mean, the oil pan's already low, but it's next to tires the bar would kind of be like an extra skid plate too. Um, but we might do where it comes forward a little bit, like a little, uh, just a little arc to line it up. Instead of just doing a straight one and however they wind up on there. Now that we have the mounts where we want them, next will be transmission mount. Should go nice and easy because we don't have to hold the engine in spot. Uh, we're gonna do the car accessories, so a shorter accessory, so the water pump and everything are further away from the radiator. Uh, the exhaust manifolds, I don't think the ones we have are going to work. We're going to try some car manifolds because they have outlets in different areas, which should help us bypass the frame and get around things. Uh, I still have to get the, uh, what's it called? The LS1 intake manifold, because it's a much shorter intake manifold than the one that we have now. And then we do have a painless chassis harness to put in this thing because it's a lot better than the chassis or the harness that they put in it with the Ranger engine. Uh, we have a AIM, uh, is it AIM? I think it's AIM, well, it's, it's a race pack. So it's gonna be a digital dash. It plugs into the OEM ECU, the OBD2 port. Um, and then we're gonna have a, a local guy here tune it for us. And uh, he's not gonna do anything crazy, but It'll be much better than the three liter.